Why hello there and welcome to another Darius vlog. Today is Monday, February 29, 2016 and today I'll be talking about a lot of different things starting with the house tour. So we filmed the house tour but it's kind of shaky so I'm going to leave it at the, the link below and just view at your own risk because it is kind of shaky. When I watched it my eyes kind of hurt. But if you really, really want to see it, then it's going to be there unlisted below. And um, I'm going to do like another house tour where it's like it's not super shaky. And like, I, I don't know, we'll eventually do it. But there really isn't that much more other than my room from Ottawa's vlog. So we're just going to leave it at that. Um, the next thing is I'm looking for highlighters. I will leave an application link below because right now the reason why the video is are so inconsistent is because we don't always have like the number of highlights to upload or maybe I'm not streaming or we just don't have enough and right now I feel like there's moments that can be used like a lot of moments that you guys are missing in the various random moments and it's just not being captured because you know not everyone can look for highlights and everyone has their own schedule but for me it's actually really important to get highlights because then I can get the videos out to you guys and you know, you know, give out free entertainment, <laughs> but, um, ugh, I don't like the way I said that just videos like that make me laugh and hopefully it makes you laugh too. Um, so there's that. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is my solo queue journey. So you guys know how I've been stuck in like diamond five, diamond two, and now I'm not really stuck. I'm just slowly crawling through ladder and it's really really painful but I'm really I'm getting a little bit better as like time passes but at the same time like it's kind of pointless because calendar doesn't really mean anything right now but now that I'm getting closer to there might as well tell you guys I'm 1-1 in my master promos for my main account and smurf so if I win two more games I'll be masters on both of them for two like two wins on each account and if I lose two more, then I got to go through promos again. So that's where I'm at right now in solo queue. And speaking of solo queue, I'm going to talk about some top champions for top lane, at least three of them, and one item that really stands out for me. So ZZ Rock Portal. The item is broken. I think you could literally build that as a defense item, as a second or third defense item, or second or third item on any champion and it will give you gold, it will give you map pressure, you can go and split push with it, you can put it somewhere and go and group up and fight, it'll help stop sieges. Like, if your team had five ZZ Rot portals, okay, and the enemy has Baron, and you just put down five of them, that's like, it gives you stats, it gives you movement speed, like it gives you armor and MR, some regen, like it doesn't give you HP, but it's just really a really solid cost efficient item because it also gives you gold when it kills stuff and when the buildings are so fucking hard to kill it's like you might as well do something else like it's really hard to deal with it so building zz rod on top jungle maybe even support even ad as a defensive item like or mid laner like i honestly think you could probably build it like just for the map pressure now it's not going to make you auto win games but i highly suggest you guys try it out because it's i mean build it at the appropriate times but and learn the spots to place it so a good example is i don't have an image for it but if you put it at your third tier you're probably going to get their third tier turret like you're going to leave it alone and you're probably going to get their third tier turret unless they put a lot of resources to deal with it and like a lot of games, people don't get third tier turrets. You just put a ZZ Rot portal down and boom, you get free ter third tier. Just like uh, Banner, when you put two promoted cannon minions against an AP champion, you get the turret in two waves. So, pretty ridiculous item to be honest. Um, now I'm going to talk about top three champions that I would suggest for top lane that I've noticed recently, so one of them is Nautilus, and one of the reasons why it's Nautilus is because one, is E is really strong, two, he's really good for solo queue because he catches people, and three, builds ZZ Rot Portal, and you can build the promoting item, so that's one of the reasons. And then there's Poppy, 
who can also build the ZZ Rot portal, but Poppy is just a really strong champion in gender right now. And the main reason why is because of her ult, the, her low CD on her uh, skills, and Frozen Gauntlet, which leads us to the next champion, Malphite. You build Sunfire, ZZ Rot, Gauntlet. And maybe a Banshee's Veil or a Spirit Visage or even a Promoting Minion. Now, if you didn't have ZZ Rod or Banner, you would build Sunfire, Spectrals, Gauntlet. Or just Sunfire and Gauntlet. Depends on if they have MR or, or if they have AP or AD. It really, really depends. And what beats those three champions, it's a really player specific thing. But when I play against. Malphite, Nalus, and Poppy, I pick Darius, and I try to fucking kill them in lane over and over. Now, the bad thing is, if you get outscaled, you're kind of screwed. Like, unless you scale to six items, Darius on six items is still okay because of his heal is ridiculous. But I love playing Darius against those champions because, one, if you all in those champions as Darius and you get the proc, which you most likely will, if you just sit, walk through the brush, walk behind them, and start auto attacking them. You're probably going to get the proc. You're probably going to burn the flash. I've done it a million times. Players still don't learn from it. It will work for you if it works for me. And if you watch my stream, you'll see me do it all the time. If you watch my past Dire's Random Moments video, there was a Jace game where I just walked behind them, walked behind the Lissandra and killed them, okay? An unbelievable amount of people fall for it. And they still fall for it today, even when I tell people... You can do this with these certain champs, and that's why I play them. Now, that is honestly the difference between a lot of players. You can literally get to Platinum off of just doing that and getting first blood over and over. Now, you'd have to be really bad at mid and late game, and they would have to be really, really bad at early game for you to not get to Plat from that. Now, now I understand that not everyone... It's not going to be e as easy for everyone, but it is like... I'll probably show you guys an example in these future videos. And I still haven't done a lane control video, so I don't know when that's coming, but let's move on. Um, so advice for mid-high diamonds trying to get into Challenger. Now, most of you guys are probably not diamond, but for the few that are, like a lot of this advice also applies to you. And a lot of it comes from not tilting. When you tilt, Okay, I was stuck in Diamond 5 for a week, a week, okay? And what I did was, I have two accounts. I play on the lower account every time I log on. And then the next day, if I get higher than my main account, I play my main account. And then I have my Smurf account. If, if my main get, account gets higher than my Smurf, then it's my Smurf main. And you just climb the ladder, okay? And that's my strategy right now, and I've learned it from from wild turtle because he did it and he was rank one for a lot of seasons or that one season or two seasons ago i forgot and he's still a top player so i highly like recommend making a new account because sometimes going back to the basics and showing that you can get to diamond again easily is actually like really good for you because you're like wow this is so easy you just switch back and forth in accounts and you like really build an understanding. You pick up on things that you never did before in the lower elos. Like for example, when I was challenger for the longest time, when I was leveling up account, I actually learned things by climbing through plat or gold. I never really been gold actually. Like plat, diamond, masters, and then back to challenger. Like I learned things on that way of carrying people, like how to carry people harder and I'm sure you guys will too. Like if you're a plat player, maybe you'll learn from playing from bronze, silver, gold, plat. If like if you can consistently carry the plat, then you might find that one thing that's stopping you from getting the diamond. And I I'm not I might be wrong, I might be full of shit, but I honestly believe that cuz Honestly, what you're really doing is just putting more time into the game and by playing the game more, you're just going to learn more. That's the bottom line. <clears throat> So the next thing is analyst desk consistency. So you guys see me on the analyst desk like once every three, four, like couple, like month or so. Um, I'm just like, 
I just show up on it because it's like, hey, you can come in and do an analyst thing. And I'm like, yeah, sure. And it's a good experience for me. I learned how to socialize or not really socialize. I don't socialize with people, anyone, because I'm fucking antisocial. You learn how to, I don't know, I just learn how to convey my voice better and think about things. And I learned uh, how hard they work. So I don't know how often I'll be on there, but every once in a while, since I live near there, I will be there whatever they ask. Um, I don't know how long I'll be doing it for because maybe one day I'll, I'll stop wanting to do it. Like, it's a good experience for me and I get to look nice. So, it's fun. Um, so, that's it for the consistency on that. Um, one of you guys on Twitter asked, if there is one piece of advice you can give to the current TSM team, what that would that be? Now, besides the obvious Quinn thing that happened last week or the week before that, it's really hard for me to see what the like what the problems are from the outside because I'm not a part of the team anymore. I would have to like work with them, watch the replays, and tell them like what like they can improve on, and even then, like. I still wouldn't know until I like watched for like a while because it isn't easy as someone on Reddit saying they should just do this. But sometimes that could be it. Like I, I've actually seen it happen and I've been in the process of it happening where Fiora's winning all these games in LCS. Maybe she's just really good on stage. Maybe people are just throwing late game. Like like maybe they're maybe they're just like working towards this goal to become like the perfect team and maybe they just don't synergize perfectly and that's what you know their coaches and people on the inside are trying to fix and I can't do that so the easiest thing for me is not getting complacent because when I look at some of the games I see some old problems that happen sometimes but not always but when they first got together it just never happened i think the biggest thing is making sure hauntzer stays the dominant player he is and keep on giving hauntzer confidence like hauntzer is an insanely high mechanical player who can basically play every champ like he even played riven like he is super fucking good okay I don't think I like I don't think everyone understands that yet even after for so long. I I think most people understand now but there's still people that question him and that just blows my mind cuz he's so fucking good. Give keep the confidence in the players and find out the best way to play the game and have be on the same mindset. And honestly, they probably all know all this. That's the only thing I could be like they're already good right now, and to get better, they need to not lose the basics. Now, the problem with the old TSM was that we would learn something, get really good, and then we would forget the old things that made us really good, and then we would fall off and it would be like imbalanced. By not forgetting the old things, like 2 versus one playing a poke comp, playing an engage comp, shot calling general stuff like not forgetting like oh we shouldn't do baron when their junglers up like stuff like that that's probably what's going to carry the team to like worlds besides slowly improving not forgetting other stuff and that's really really hard it's easier said than done and i don't know how they're going to do it but they just got to do it they can do it next thing is immortals so they finally lost the they finally got their first loss and they lost to CLG. They, um, I don't know what happened. Like, they just gave all the resources to Darshan and focus Huni's lane. And I guess Darshan had a strategy for Huni and it worked out. And X Smithy played Udyr. Like, I don't know if it was comps, but it was a really close game. I, I don't know what to say. Like, Immortals is still insanely good. Hopefully that lit, lights a fire under their ass and being like, we're already really good. Or maybe 
they're already like set up for playoffs and they're just trying to like not give out strategies i i don't know what it is honestly but they just seem like a really chill team and they have fun and they just win so whatever they're doing is working for them i don't really have much of an opinion other than i'm happy that turtle is succeeding and that's about it um and i like the players on their team oh where's my voice um the next thing i want to talk about is social media impact on professional players I am actually going to stop the vlog soon because my voice is like gone. Maybe I've been talking too much today. Um, but last topic, social media impact on professional players. It's really important that they don't see the hate. And hate can be like motivation, but it can really hurt your confidence. When pro players like your social media, it's just not good for them. So it can have a positive effect, like people cheering them on. But that one bad comment, if you get really salty, it's it hurts a lot. So anyways, thanks for watching my vlog. I'm losing my voice, so I'm going to end it now. Um, bye.